Learning objectives include difficulties in developing effective antimicrobials and their modes of action. Now, developing drugs generally against prokaryotes is easier than developing antimicrobial against eukaryotes. You know, there are two types of microorganisms. Most abundantly, we see bacteria, for example. They are prokaryotes. And there are some other uh, agents, microbial agents, that are eukaryotic uh, in nature, like fungi, protozoa. These are eukaryotic cells. So developing antimicrobials against prokaryotes is relatively easy because the structural details or differences um, in them uh, make us specifically target those structures. And like, for example, if you take the example of uh, ribosomes in prokaryotes versus eukaryotes, we know that the ribosomes which are used for making proteins, ribosomes of prokaryotes are much different than eukaryotes. And we can target these ribosomes by making substances or chemicals that selectively inhibit protein synthesis in, by binding to prokaryotic ribosomes and sparing eukaryotic ribosomes. And that is the reason it's easy to make antibacterials against prokaryotes rather than eukaryotes. Similarly, viruses. We know that they multiply in the cell using the cellular machinery. So if we try to inhibit their growth or their replication, we would essentially diminish or stop the activities of the cell itself. And that is not something that we desire. So problem basically lies at the cellular level and the cellular differences uh, scientists manipulate or exploit to come up with new ideas. Uh, these antimicrobials, they have different spectrum of their activities. Some are narrow. Uh, that means that they are only against some uh, certain groups or one group of microbes. And the other side of the spectrum is a wide spectrum antibacterial or antimicrobials. In wide spectrum, the chemical targets many groups of bacteria uh, at, at a time. Like uh, tetracycline is a broad spectrum antibiotic. Penicillin is a narrow spectrum antibiotic because it targets only gram-positive organisms, sparing all other gram-negative um, microorganisms. Tetracycline, because it inhibits protein synthesis, so it targets all gram-negative as well as gram-positive bacteria. So, narrow-spectrum antibiotics, they also have their use um, because we know that they are relatively more selective. So, they spare uh, body microflora. On the other side, wide-spectrum antibiotics, although... Uh, they're good to use when you don't know the identity of the organism. In a patient, you can use wide-spectrum antibiotic, but the problem is that they destroy normal microflora. A very good example of this destruction of normal microflora is seen in children. When they're treated with the broad-spectrum antibiotics sometimes, children develop a candida albicans, which is a yeast infection, because all microbes that are living in the body as microflora or microbiota, they're also destroyed, and there's no competition. And these eukaryotic cells, these yeast, uh, candida albicans, can take over and cause infection. Drug targets various components of the, uh, the cell. Here, uh, this picture is showing various targets of uh, prokaryotic cells. As you can see uh, at the top, uh, there's a slight line close to the, the word drug. That line shows that there is a, uh, a gap in the wall of the bacterium. So that is one target. So that means that some chemicals would target the cell wall. Some can target the nucleic acid synthesis. As you can see, that 
it, they can, some can stop replication of DNA, some can stop transcription of RNA from DNA, and then still others can stop protein uh, synthesis from a transcribed messenger RNA. And others uh, can interact with the enzymes and block them. And those enzymes, if they make essential components or essential ingredients in, that are needed for making some important components like DNA or purines, um, that could be used for stopping uh, or, or making those not, not available in the body and the bacteria would ultimately die. So there are multiple sites, multiple places where these targets are available and could be used for making antibacterial or, or selective, selectively killing these organisms. These are some of the examples uh, that we use, uh, like penicillin, cephalosporins, bacitracin, and vancomycin, all these drugs, antimicrobials, they target the cell wall and they inhibit cell wall synthesis. Protein synthesis could be stopped or could be inhibited. And some of the antibiotics that are named here, like chlorophenicol, erythromycin, tetracycline, and streptomycin are examples uh, for protein synthesis inhibition. DNA could be targeted, and quinolones and rimfapin are the two antibiotics that are used to block the synthesis of DNA. Plasma membrane is still another target. Polymyxin B uh, causes injury to the plasma membrane. And if the plasma membrane is injured, the essential components of the cell leak out, leaving the cells deficient in those components the cell dies. Essential metabolites, uh, as I mentioned earlier, could be inhibited. And a good example of use of sulfonamides and a combination of sulfonamide with trimethoprim is used to inhibit an enzyme that makes PABA, which basically is needed to make folic acid. And we know that folic acid is needed for making purines and pyrimidines, which are essential ingredients of DNA. So in summary, um, antibiotics selectively inhibit various components of microbes.